Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're covering everything you need to know about bluegill swim baits. This time of year, there is a war going on between bass and bluegill. As bass are trying to spawn, bluegill are up there just absolutely gorging themselves on those bass eggs and those bass fry any opportunity that they get. Those males that are there guarding those beds, they're doing everything they can to run those bluegill out of there. It is just this never ending revolving battle between bass and bluegill. As the bass spawn comes to an end, bluegill are up spawning, there's some overlap there, and it flip flops, right? Those bluegill are now up in the shallows, they're predictable, and you better believe those big bass are up there taking advantage of that, mowing down those bluegill. So it works both ways. Part of the spring, bluegill are messing up the bass population. Part of the spring, bass are messing up the bluegill population. Regardless, bass and bluegill are in this constant interaction and throwing bluegill swim baits this time of year is a great way to catch those great big fish. So today we are focusing in on bluegill swim baits. I've got my baits broken down into four categories and essentially what that is is you know small soft baits, full size soft baits, and then we're going to call them fast retrieve hard baits and slow retrieve hard baits. I break them into that small of categories. Okay, so four categories of baits, uh, and I've got a bunch of underwater footage for you as well to help you understand how these different baits behave because investing in swim baits across the board is not an inexpensive endeavor. As a whole, bluegill baits are less expensive than some of the big, big swim baits, but still they are an investment. So I'll do my best to give you a feel for how these different baits move in the water uh, so that you know what you're getting uh, and you know when and where to apply it. So we'll jump into the baits here in a second, but essentially when and where to throw these baits, let's cover that first, then we'll get into the details of the baits. Bass and bluegill, that interaction, it's taking place up shallow. Okay, so you want to focus your attention with bluegill swim baits up in the shallows. I would say less than six or seven feet of water most of the time. Uh, around docks, bluegill get up in the shadows of those docks or around docks, skipping docks with them can be unbelievable. Fishing up around lay downs, fishing up around shallow cover, grass beds, um, those are the areas where those bluegills naturally collect and the bass that are eating them know that and they tend to guard those areas. So if you've got shallow coves that run back and the bass can sort of close off the entrance pretty easily, you'll see a lot of that where, where there'll be a great big female or two that almost stands guard at the entrance to a shallow cove. Uh, and then when they want to feed, they go in there and just mow down on those bluegill. It's really amazing. So focus shallow, focus around cover. Um, and then of course, a bluegill swim bait is an excellent uh, spawn or sight fishing type bait as well. There definitely is an element of that. So the baits themselves, let's go uh, soft baits to hard baits. And we'll start with the bigger soft baits, then go smaller, then we'll switch to hard baits. So, as a whole, with my soft baits, I focus on these wedge type tails. And it's because I can do the most with them. So they look amazing, just swimming them mid column. They look amazing, skipping them up under cover. Uh, I fish them on a slow, steady retrieve. Wedge style tails, there's no twitching, popping, ripping, working them, none of that. It makes it really easy. It's just a steady retrieve so you're not overthinking it. It's as easy as going out and throwing a crankbait, a spinnerbait, a chatterbait. Just a little bit different profile, right? Now there are plenty of swim baits that come with uh, boot tails, but I personally, I prefer these wedge tails. And again, it pulls double duty. So they're great 
just chucking and winding, covering water, but they also look really good if I do sight fish with them sitting on bottom. It's a good overall profile. So in the larger sizes, these are the three that I focus my time on, and each one of them is a little different. So this is a Matt Lures hammer tail, jig hook bait, exposed jig hook, and this is a Savage Gear line through. So this hook comes out. I run my line through the nose and out the belly, or I can run it through the nose and out the back. So I can also put this hook up here. It'll work both ways. Although I will say that far and away, I prefer this particular bait with a belly hook. It's just better balanced, swims really well that way. Um, probably the best swimming bait out of all of them, um, just day in and day out is that Savage Gear line through, just a really, really cool profile. And then the last one in sort of that full size category is this one, this is a 13 gill. This one is neat because it is open bellied and it's got a slot on the back and then you put your beast hook in there. So this is a weedless rig, but when they eat it, it collapses and there is a great big hook in there. Now I bent my hook up just a hair and that is because I'm not around grass. Okay, so all I'm trying to do is get it through wood. Like say I'm skipping under docks and I need to bang over a beam. If I've got that hook tucked in there, it'll come over a beam, no problem. But by bending it out ever so slightly, I get just a little more, see that hook exposure? Just a little more hook exposure and my hookup ratio is higher. So if you're in the thick stuff, fish that hook stock with that point turned down a little bit, it'll come through anything. But if you don't need it to come through anything, then bend it up ever so slightly and you'll hook even more of the bites that you get. But it's really that simple for that full size bait, just those three. If I want a jig hook, I'm in open water. Maybe I'm bumping along bottom. I use that mat lures. If I'm fishing up over the top of cover, I fish that Savage Gear, and if I'm sending it through the cover, I fish that 13. Pretty basic, right? Now, there's also the smaller baits. Uh, I keep that really basic too, <laughs> really basic. So this is a smaller version of the Matt Lures. Here's a size profile comparison, okay? And again, I'm gonna link all these baits down in the video description, so don't try and keep track of it. I'll have the links in order. So the order that I talk about them is the same order that you'll see the links. But again, you can see that size profile difference. Sometimes you're on a lake or a pond where they're primarily bigger gills. Sometimes you're on a place where everything you see is those little tiny gills. That's how I choose between the sizes. Uh, and also the smaller the bait, the easier it is for them to just fully engulf it, right? The smaller ones just fit better. Bluegill as a whole are a very difficult profile for a bass to eat. I mean, you never see a bass floating out in the middle of the lake choking to death on a shad. They just, they just don't. But you will occasionally find a fish choking or has already passed with a great big bluegill stuck in their mouth. Um, bluegill are an awkward profile. They're very tall, they're very spiny. And sometimes those bass can't swallow them, they get stuck in there and they end up dying. So with that in mind, baits that imitate bluegill are also a very difficult profile for bass to eat. In fact, years ago, I refused to throw bluegill imitators at all. Uh, instead, I would use traditional baits painted like bluegill because at least they could fit them in their mouth. Uh, but the industry has come so far now. They've gotten rid of a lot of the big fins and some of those things that used to make it tough. Uh, and now they hook up really well. So again, the first small one is that Matt Lures. This is the Savage Gear four inch. And then this is the cute little guy. That's the three inch. Check that out. Both excellent baits. I was looking at this one. He's all chewed up. You can see the teeth marks on him. I've been jacking some fish up on him. Just that little tiny guy. But both of these are amazing swimming baits. If you throw them out there, they don't necessarily swim perfectly to bottom. They'll kind of wander to bottom. But as soon as you start winding, they have that perfect little tail kick. I mean, I mean, 
perfect. And it's a great profile that a bass can easily just completely choke. And then if you're in a pond or something like that, the little guy can be an excellent option as well. So that's the soft baits. Uh, I keep it really simple. I focus in on those narrower profiles, top to bottom. None of them are very tall, top to bottom. Those are the easiest for the bass to eat. And I throw soft baits a lot. Uh, they're really good at skipping. All of these skip well. The Savage Gears skip the best, but I can shoot them back up under trees. You know, again, these fish are up shallow, so are the bluegill. So your bluegill are up in the cover and bass are hunting them. They typically patrol the outside edge. So I like to skip back into cover and then swim out and come nose to nose with those bass. Uh, and then they just, they clobber them. Uh, let's talk hard baits. Hard baits are a little different animal. So hard baits, I have two categories. I can't necessarily say, you know, glide baits and multi-piece because there's some overlap. Uh, but with my hard baits, it's a fast retrieve and slow retrieve. And the way I choose between them is the bass's behavior. Generally speaking, I start with the slow retrieve baits. That's the style I'm most comfortable with. I have confidence in most often. But if I'm seeing aggressive behavior in the water, I immediately switch. What I mean by that is if I'm out there fishing and the lake is a mirror and nothing's really happening, I'm throwing that slow bait. But if I see fish busting, or if I see something running on the surface and a bass chasing after him, you know that those fish are aggressive and you're far better off with a fast moving bait. So three baits in that fast category. First one is the Matt Lures hard gill. Totally custom. A uh, small batch type bait. Matt Lures has been making baits as long as I have been swim bait fishing, which is a very long time. Uh, he's been making baits for multiple decades. Uh, makes great baits. So this Matt Lures hardgill three piece bait. And again, it's a bait that you fish fast. You don't have to, you can slow roll them and they have a nice slow action to them. But I do better fishing it aggressively, so just burning it. And then you can also burn and stop, burn and stop. So it'll, it's shooting through the water fast. And I fish them within about a foot, a foot and a half of the surface, okay? Again, up shallow. And I want these fish to come charging out after them. So you can either just cover water, just burning, or you can burn, pause, burn, pause, burn, 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 pause. Sort of like our tactical crank, right? Burn, 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 pause. Burn, 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 pause. But really that bait will be shooting forward and then it just sort of cuts out to the side and just stalls out for a second. Shoots forward, stalls out. And if those fish are charging after it and it stalls out, that's when they crush it. So that's a great option. The other one that I really like to do that with, that's another full profile. This is Buka's bull gill. So Mike Buka, bull shad swim baits. He makes this bull gill. Same thing. This is a pure burning bait. So burn, 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 pause. Burn, 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 pause. Just going as fast as I can go. Typically when I'm doing that, I'm fishing weed edges. That's where I like to do it. So you know that the fish, say I've got grass that comes out off the bank and then I can see with my electronics or with my eyes in clear water that there's a hard edge on the grass. You know, you know that you know that those bass patrol that edge. It's like a highway. So I don't have to see them. I know they're there. Whether or not they wanna feed is a different story, but one of the best ways to trigger a feed response is to burn a bluegill profile on that grass line, and that's where that shines. All of my best bites on this bait have come when I am absolutely burning up grass lines, and they crush it. It's a lot like that Matt Lures. I mean, when they eat it, they eat it like they mean it. What I love about this bait is that there's no fins anywhere, even a soft tail to get in the way. Again, a bluegill profile is a difficult profile for them to eat, but without fins in the way, they can just vacuum this thing up. It's got a really, really good 
hookup ratio. Uh, now on almost all of the, well not almost, on all of these baits, I also upgrade all my hardware. Some of them come with great hardware, some of them come with okay hardware. I change all of it because again, I'm fishing for bigger than average fish, right? A lot of three and four pounders will eat, bluegill pro, will eat a bluegill profile, but so will a giant. And I don't wanna miss my opportunity to get that fish in the boat. So I'm changing out hardware either to owner one X's like this or owner three X's like that. Um, but I change them all out and I change my split rings too to hyper wires. Uh, like these are hyper wire number fives on this bait. And then that's an owner one X one aught. And that is a size, let me look at it. That's a size one. So a one aught and a one um, and that's how I get my best action out of that bait. And then if they crunch it, I've got them because those are sticky, sticky, sharp hooks. Last one here is the Mega Bass Vitalian. And it's always, it's always a hard bait to categorize because it's barely a swim bait. It's more like a jointed crank bait, uh, but boy does it catch them and it catches big ones and it catches them just like a swim bait will. So this is the category I put it in. This Mega Bass Vitalian is that same deal. Burn and stop, burn, stop, burn, stop. But it's not like charging it 10 feet forward. That's not what I do. I just do like a crank, 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 pause, crank, 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 pause, crank, 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 pause all the way back. It's got this hard charge. And then if you leave stop stock hooks on it, it'll float up pretty quick. If you upgrade to three X hooks on it, so a pair of number twos, number two here, number two here, three X hook, it'll just charge and stall out. Uh, but it's an incredibly aggressive bait, incredibly loud bait. Again, it's more like a crankbait than a swim bait, but it fits both categories. They will maul this thing. Um, and it's amazing. I've caught giant largies on them. I've caught big smallmouth on them. I have caught fish in the jungle that you just can't fathom you know just fish with crazy fangs and peacock bass and just every aggressive species will mow down a battalion it's incredible they love to crush them so definitely a bait that belongs in the lineup and again the trick with a battalion is breaking up the cadence of the reel don't throw it out there and wind it back and just leisurely go fishing. Don't do that. If you're going to fish it, I want you to be aggressive and stop. Aggressive, stop. Aggressive, stop. That's what will get those crushing blows on that bait. All right, and then last category here is going to be these slower retrieve baits. And basically I've got three baits in this category. I've got four, but it's basically three. First one, this is an S Waver 168. And this is what I mentioned earlier, where I've always taken traditional type baits and then painted them in bluegill patterns, right? Nothing about that is a bluegill shape, but it's a bluegill enough color that they'll eat it. And it's an excellent profile for hooking up. So this is a bait that I throw in bluegill type situations and have done so for a very long time with amazing results. If they bite this, I'm hooking them, right? They're gonna come up, they're gonna T-bone it, and they're gonna end up with a hook on one side or the other. They just, they get a mouth full of it. It's just the way it goes. Or they come in and they headshot it, and that front hook sticks them in the lip. Uh, it's amazing how well that traditional profile painted like a bluegill can work. Now with that said, again, all of these companies are responding, they're adapting, they're creating new baits, and there are several that do an amazing job, and these baits didn't exist all that long ago. So the first one is the Jackal Ganterelle. This is the Ganterelle. This is the Ganterelle Junior. I tend to focus my time on the full size, but you could throw, both work great. I just feel like I catch the same fish that will eat this one. I catch them on this one anyway. They're not afraid of it. And if I cross paths with a monster, I feel like I'm more likely to get them on the larger profile. So that's why I focus my time here. But if I was primarily 
pond fishing or small water fishing, I would throw the little guy just because it's easier. Uh, you know, they're only size two hooks. You can throw it on, you know, a jig rod or something like that. So it, it doesn't require a separate rod than the rod you'd be walking around your pond with anyway. You know, a good medium heavy or heavy rod will do it. But the Ganterelle is such a neat bait. And I don't get that hung up on the colors. There's three or four bluegill type colors. Like this one is kind of chromey. There's a few, can you see, you see all the, the rash up here or the rash back here? That's just angry bass, man. This thing has been eaten, just munched on. So again, I don't worry too much about the specific color. As long as it's in the bluegill realm, it's going to be fine. So this one's kind of chromey. They've got some that are kind of ghosty. But this bait, when I'm swimming this thing, I fish it incredibly slow. So I throw it out and a glide bait, when I fish a glide bait, I work it, pop, pop, and then keep winding. One, two, three, four, twitch, twitch. One, two, three. That's how, and I just repeat that, okay? So four reels, two twitches without breaking cadence, and I just carry on. That's how I fish glide baits around cover. That's how I fish the S waiver. That's how I fish this next one up. The Ganterelle is the opposite, okay? So the way I fish this is I go one, two, three, pause. One, two, three, pause. So here's the difference. My glide bait coming through the water, it's, it's making its S, and then I twitch, twitch, really aggressive moves, pop, pop, and then I continue. The Ganterelle, it's doing that same thing, but when I pause it, it just sort of wanders away. And then I draw it back in. And then it wanders away. That's, for whatever reason, they just eat it better that way. So this one, I'm not twitching, I'm pausing to get it to drift off. Uh, and it, it's really, really fun. And they eat it really, really good. Now, last but not least is this bait sanity gill here. And this is a new bait. Um, these have only been around, I don't know, six or eight months, something like that. But this guy is a true gill profiled glide. So I'm going to fish it just like I described. Four turns, two twitches. So it's just gliding along and then kick, kick, and just carrying on. Now, you don't want to twitch it and then pause. The reason why is that any glider like this, if you twitch it, snap, snap, and then stop, they tend to continue to carry around and they end up kind of faced the wrong way. And it's hard to get them to naturally come back. So how you work any glide, not this one, any glide is really important. Work it, twitch, twitch, and just carry right on. Carry right on, twitch, twitch. That's the key to getting consistent bites on that glide, is that line never going so slack that that bait just wanders off forever because they turn back around. The Ganterelle doesn't do that. The Ganterelle wanders off. It's a three piece. See, it's got a tail joint too. It's a three piece, not a two piece. And it makes just a subtle difference where instead of turning around, it just goes out to the side. That's why I'm able to pause it. So this is a true glider. So four twitches, two pops, but hands down the best bluegill glider that I've ever seen. They did an amazing job with this bait. Um, they've been difficult to get. They keep selling out constantly, uh, but they're in some other colors too. Like their jungle perch is kind of bluegill-esque. It's, it's close enough that I don't care. I'll throw that one too. Anything that's sort of in that bluegill realm, because bluegill are funny. Like, look at this color. That's bluegill. That's bluegill. That's bluegill. That's bluegill. Look at this one. That's bluegill, right? If you get online and look at pictures of bluegills, there's about 8,000 different color schemes for a bluegill, and you just can't find two that look the same. You really can't. Looking at actual bluegill, they all look different. So as long as you get in the realm of bluegill, you seem to do just fine. But this is a fantastic bluegill profile, and I love it. 
no side fins. They kept it thin. This top fin doesn't stick way up in the air causing problems for you. A lot of bluegill baits are like this tall or that tall or really tall. You just can't hook up. This is a great height. It's almost the same as a ganterel and they just hook up really, really well. So I'm stoked to see companies building true bluegill profiles without getting those big exaggerated fins and causing problems. This is a great profile. See how much it slims down on the back? That fish isn't gonna wanna bite right here. They're gonna wanna hit the main core of that bait. They're going to hook up. Uh, it's just a great design. So again, true bluegill profile versus taking a glider and painting it like a bluegill. But both are great options. And that's the end of the baits. I do keep it pretty, I mean, that was still, it's a variety of baits, but you don't need all of those baits, right? If you have a slow moving bait, pick your favorite. A fast moving bait, pick your favorite. A full size bluegill and a small bluegill, you're set. You can cover the gamut. But I wanted to show you the different ones that I throw because we're constantly trying all these different baits, searching for baits with those little nuances, the ones that stand out and make a difference in our fishing. And each one of these has shined for me at one time or another where I've just creamed them on it. So a bunch of great options. And then I did talk about how the little guys, you can throw those on just a regular rod. Um, the bigger profiles, the true big ones, you can throw on a swim bait rod. Like I'll throw them on an eight foot heavier, an eight foot medium heavy. Uh, but you can also get away with like a stout jig rod. This is a 7.7 heavy, uh, just a good strong rod because they're sort of that in-between size where they're bigger than a traditional bait, but they're not a giant swim bait. Um, so you can, if you're just gonna have one or two baits, you can get away on a big jig rod and you'll be okay. If you're going to invest in a variety of these full-size type baits, then I would just go ahead and get a proper swim bait rod as well. Because just like I talk about upgrading my hardware so that if I get a giant bite, I know I'm gonna get her, you're better off with a dedicated swim bait rod where if you get a giant bite, you know you can control that fish. Um, but these can be fished on, you don't necessarily need the highest end rods. Like I use some really high end swim bait equipment, um, but I've caught some really, really nice ganterel fish on hundred to hundred and twenty dollar swim bait rods while I was experimenting. You know, Dobbins Fury, uh, the Savage Gear, uh, St. Croix, some of those different rods that are more budget friendly type rods. And I've done really, really well with them while experimenting with these baits. And I just have not had a problem. Those, the less expensive swim bait rods tend to be a little bit more moderate. They tend to have more give which is for the most part what you want with this size bait anyway, so it works out beautifully. But I'll link a couple of those rods down in the description for you as well. But hopefully this helps you. Hopefully seeing some of them underwater, I couldn't get footage of every last one of them, um, but I did what I could for you. Hopefully seeing underwater footage helps you get a feel for the different baits so you can choose the ones you want to throw. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.